happy day. This is uh, UTNU coming to you 2023 and uh, permit me to say happy new year because this is my first time for the year of coming publicly like this to speak um, to my audience, to my friends out there. Again, happy new year. Welcome to this amazing year of God's possibilities. Um, 2023 has a lot to give to us in spite of what is happening in the world, particularly if you're in this part of the world, Nigeria, then it might sound really weird if I'm saying that God has something to do for us in this year. It doesn't really matter how the year is beginning, but the end justifies what we're going to have. So happy new year again. God has a lot in store for us this year. There are going to be a lot of possibilities amidst challenges. What did I say? A lot of possibilities amidst challenges. So it doesn't matter what you're seeing. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Maybe you don't have Naira to, you know, to exchange for your product. No need to worry. None of us will die as a result of hunger or whatever. This is a phase and it will pass away. Now, let me, let me share with you what I have to share with my friends and my audience today. Now, um, because this year is a year of God's possibilities, and by that it means that we're going to be um, manifesting lots of um, God's goodness, God's power in leaps and bounds in so many ways. It means that if there aren't challenges, then there won't be any need to see the the manifest power of God. So challenges will now prove that God can. So you just relax. So um, very soon, we're gonna be celebrating Valentine's all over the world. Valentine is coming, yeah, Valentine is coming. Boys are plotting, hey, girls are planning, you know, all of them. <laughs> Valentine's is here. So many people are plotting what they're going to do, the air carpets they're going to, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. But you see, beyond what you know, I would like to give a word of advice that in these years, Valentine's, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking against Valentine's, I beg, you know, I, I just wanted to know. I am not talking against Valentine's. I'm simply saying that in all your doings, be wise. I'm putting my hands in my two ears. Young man, young woman, in all your doings, let there be a level of wisdom. Number two, let there be God in what you're doing. So um, I know that you know everybody, you know, Valentine's is synonymous to love, love in the air, love, I mean, even the ringtones, you know, calls, dial someone down, they're singing love is in the air. <laughs> But you see, many times, this love may not be long-lasting. There are people who cannot love for one month. <laughs> there are people who cannot, I mean, in fact, the energy they exude may not make people to come near them. And sometimes they wonder, why do people treat me the way they do? Or why don't I have people around me now, that is what I want to say today, and this all boils down to relationship. Relationship in, relationship, relationship out. Now, relationship is what we all know, but I want to say it the way it applies to, to my heart, and particularly for those who love Jesus. A relationship for every man is um, the platform or the connect that enables you to get to where you desire to be in life. Maybe you want to be a famous um, artist or, you know, a, f a famous musician or the world's architect or something you want to stand out. Sometimes you can be struggling for a very long time if you do not have the platform of relationship because whatever God does to man, he does it through man. So it will take relationship for you to be 
who you want to be or to get to where you want to get to in life. So I term relationship as a ladder that men will climb to get to their desired um, positions in life, relationship. Now Valentine's is almost here. Like I was trying to sing, you know, people are plotting, men, young men, young women plotting on what they're going to do and all of that. And many times people enter into these um, relationship, um, love, a one night fling, or two some, three some, whatever you call it, which is not actually relationship. Because relationship was meant to either make you better or it would make you live a life of pains and hurts. There are some relationships that people go into and they end up living a life of regrets for the rest of their lives. As Valentine's is coming, there are many who will not do it in wisdom or with wisdom. They will do it excluding God in whatever exploits they want to do. And at the end of the day, they will end up living in pains or having hurts or having regrets. Now, I'd like for you to know that any relationship that is outside of God may not be long lasting because he is the one who is relational. Our God is a relational God. Everything you desire about relationship is in God. Relationships are currencies. It's not only dollars, pounds, yen or naira what have you that are currencies relationships are currencies i'm telling you that there are things that money cannot buy but relationship for those of us who are christians money cannot buy your salvation it takes relationship with jesus to give you the soul salvation that you need if money buys everything then most rich people shouldn't die because I've seen rich people who have money stacked up but it couldn't save them even in the place of ill health and so they die but there is what relationship would do for them if they had a connect to someone who had what to do to help them then they would have survived I'm saying this to say that in this Valentine's let not your vow or your perception about Valentine's be only in money because when you do only money, you will live to regret for the rest of your life. I have examples of people who chose money and threw away relationship and they lost it all. My number one example is Judas. Judas had a strategic relationship with Jesus that would have earned him a pillar in the kingdom of God but something happened like it happens to some of us maybe when we're exposed to certain challenges and we can't just face it and then we choose to throw away a relationship and then to get money Judas chose money but at the end of the day he lost the money he lost the relationship he lost his life I'm saying this to say in case all that you know about life is money, do not choose money and throw away relationships. It won't pay off for you for long. I have another um, example in the Bible still. Daniel had a relationship with God even at the peak of his governing career. He was in government. He was high up there. He chose to be um, very intimate with God and defied whatever plot men did against him. At the end of the day, he sailed through. The Bible records that he was relevant through many terms, many regimes in government because he chose relationship with God. I have another example, Joseph. Joseph had economic power in Egypt. In fact, before he had economic power, 
he had a relationship with the God of his fathers that even when the wife of a top person in that land needed maybe to give him money and sleep with him, but he defied it. He chose relationship and defied money. And then God gave him a high um, level of economic power in a strange land. Should I tell another person? Another person who had a relationship with God was Abraham, our father Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons, you and I, many sons. You know the song. Abraham had a relationship with God. It was so intimate that God changed his title and called him a friend of God. If you read the Bible and if you're familiar with the Bible stories, you will know that there was a time God wanted to destroy a certain nation. Sodom and Gomorrah. God could have gone ahead to destroy the land by himself. But because of the relationship, God said, how can I do a thing like this without telling my friend Abraham? I mean, it means that in whatever relational lifestyle you are trying to get, when God is outside of it, you will lose big time. Abraham gained the confidentiality of God because he chose to have an intimate relationship with God. And this takes me to tell you that the easiest way to your ascending your um, relevance in life is relationship, but with God inside. So I will go down to talk about the different kinds of relationships, which number one and the most prioritized, the most important is your relationship with God, number one, number one, 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 your relationship with God. The Bible says, Matthew's Gospel chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. It said, Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important commandment. Then he said the second most important commandment is like the first. He said, love your neighbor as, your, as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then verse 40 says, the whole law of Moses and the teachings of the prophet depend on these two commandments. Jesus was trying to tell the disciples and to say to all of us that even though back in those days God brought laws through Moses to help his people navigate their life aright in life, you know, and all of those laws were brought about so that man can obey these two laws. Number one, in all your relationships, number one, love the Lord your God. Number two, in all your loving, love your neighbor as yourself. And we all know that this second loving of our neighbor is beyond the errors, the erotic love, the love of sex, the love of sexual escapades. It's beyond that. It is the love that is commitment. It is the love that needs action. It is the love that can sometimes and most times be sacrificial. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, if you want to show love in the coming Valentines, first of all, consider how your heart is aligned with God. Consider how your heart is in love with God. Consider how you love your neighbor as yourself. We know very well that many plots that people have for the forthcoming Valentine's is how someone will have a night out with someone he or she claims he loves, which in one month will not be lasting. But what I'm trying to say is beyond what we perceive. And then I have read in the Bible in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, talks about a people who chose to love the Lord with all their hearts. And if you read down to 
um, verse 15, from verse 12 to verse 15. Verse 15 now concludes it, that because they loved God sacrificially like this, God gave them peace all around. Now, you will answer yourself this question. In the kind of love that you practice, how much peace do you have? How much peace do you live in? The kind of love that you practice, does it not give you heart aches at the end of the day? Uh, how do they say it? The kind of love that you practice, does it not give you, uh, does it not serve you breakfast? <laughs> I got it, I got it, I got it. it you know, if, if the kind of love that you're practicing, it has been serving you breakfast. So why do you still indulge in it? Why don't you do it the right way? That's why I'm here today to encourage you that there is a better way to this kind of love that we're talking about. So, instead of you having breakfast served in month one, the next quarter, another breakfast is served. Before you know it, you're having, ah, my heart is aching. Oh my God, I have had a heartbreak. You know, God never gives anyone a heartbreak. <laughs> my darling, God never gives anyone a heartbreak. So I would want to encourage you in these um, um, coming Valentines, instead of you doing it the way we always, or people always do, let's see how to reroute it. So number one relationship is your relationship with God so you can live in peace, at peace for the rest of your life because he will not lead you to who you should relate with. You know, it will be like minds that you should relate with. I mean, even if you're not married and you want to, 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 to be married, he will lead you to the kind of person that will work in the same perspective, your, your state of mind that you are, that you marry a right, not having been served breakfast day in, day out. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? So let's do it right. And even if we're married couples, I mean, I'm, I'm a married woman, I've been married for the past 30 years, oh my God. 30 years, it doesn't look as if I've been married because by the help of the Almighty God, we did it right. Oh yeah, we did it right. You can ask me again, we did it right. So, <laughs> so uh, I just want to encourage you to do it right. Don't let anybody um, mess up with your life. Don't let anybody be serving you with breakfast. I don't think you deserve it, except you think you do except you don't have value for yourself. But if you do, there is a way that seems right. But it won't end you well. There is another way that is very unpopular. It might not seem acceptable, but it will end you well. well whatever the case is, the choice is yours. Like I said, that Judas chose money, but at the end of the day, he lost the money he chose. He lost the relationship he would have gained and then he ended up losing his life ultimately so the choice is yours when you have the love that is backed up with god the love that is god's kind of love um there's so many things you will escape many people are in relationships but so many things happen like jealousies you know when someone sees what he or she feels should be his or hers and then he sees in another person's life and instead of the person being um, mature and polite going to find out how to do to make it better for his, himself he chooses to allow his heart become embittered about the person and become jealous and you know sometimes begins to act in a very bad competitive way I want to say to someone today, the love that is God's kind of love is not full of envy. It's not full of bitterness. It's not full of revenge. It is not. So if you must enjoy love, weigh it. Weigh the love. As you are going out on a date on the Valentine's Day, how much of the fear of God does this guy have? so he can even treat you with respect. Because when someone respects God and fears God, then it will trickle down to the way he treats you. But if someone is, still, is saying to hell, I mean, you just get out with this, your church thing, I don't want to hear about it, then you know that you are, in a, you are in some kind of something. 
But I just pray that that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. But the choice is yours, okay? In your love, I have seen people who love things more than they love even man. Talk less of God. They love things more than they love God, more than they love man. I beg you, if you're a child of God, if you have the fear of God, I need for you to know that any time in your life that anything takes the place of God, you love, maybe you love your, you know, your looks more than God, or you love your job more than God, or you love your spouse more than God, or you love your girlfriend, your boyfriend more than God, or you love even your gadgets more than God, and some will love their pets more than God. Anytime you love anything more than God, you are triggering um, God's jealousy to be aroused. He will fight that thing because if you are his child and you're confessing your love to him, then he comes first. I hear the word say that when you seek God first, when you put God first in your life and in everything you do, then all other things shall be added to you. It is like a magnet. If you put a magnet in the center of, um, how do they say it, a, um, a magnetic field, when I was in school many years ago, you know, it attracts. So when you set God first in your life, you know, things will, will be attracted to you. So wisdom will now tell you that you pursue God first so that other things will be added to you. Now, my word for you today is Valentine's is here. Valentine's has come. Valentine is coming. Whether it is here, it has come, or it is coming, what I'm trying to say to you today is that do whatever you're doing in wisdom, with wisdom. Do whatever you're doing in the fear of God and with the fear of God so that the end product of it will bring you your desired goals. But if you choose the other route, then the end product of it is going to, is going to be regrets, will be hurts, will be pains all through, even if it's not all through the rest of your life, but there's going to be a scar. Everybody, if you have a scar, you know that even when it is not paining you again, you, the scar will still be on your body. So if you don't need that kind of scar, then wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom is seen by the number of children that she has. The Lord God bless you today. Be wise in your dating in these Valentines. Do it in the fear of God. Be wise in all your escapades. Do it in wisdom. And you'll be glad you took that decision. God bless you. And I pray that the wisdom of God will be paramount in your heart. I pray that the Spirit of God, who is also wisdom, will lead you and that you'll be willing for him to lead you so you will not crash land in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord, God bless you. We're going to have the next um, ep episode of this same teaching, Relationship, you know, after God, the next one. So you just click the link and then subscribe. Click the link. Share it to your friends. And let this go viral. The Lord will bless you because you're a part of what God is doing. And he's transforming power in this season. I celebrate you. I love you. And I appreciate you. God bless you. Gracias.